today's video, I am going to show you how to become a master of the force. One of the key components to properly tracking lightsaber footage is that you have to make sure that your footage is clear. So, we're going to use this handle of a golf club. The handle here is wide, very wide and it will allow for easier tracking when you're using After Effects to edit your footage. What you have to make sure of is that when you swing your saber, it is easy to track. Don't swing it rapidly like this, or else the footage and also your editor will not track everything properly lightsaber footage. Let's say you have your prop here, and you move it so blindly that you don't know where your tracker will track things, so it'll make it hard. Don't move it in like a motion like this, because when you are rotoscoping, it'll be very difficult for your program to track all those points. So let's say you move it like this. It's very hard to track, extremely hard to track. So when you have your saber prop, do it in a fluid motion so that when you're going through your tracker, it'll go through properly. So here is the editing process. Greetings everyone, this is D22 with you today from D22, the main channel. Dom, that's my name. So I'm gonna show you now in this portion of the video how to make your lightsaber effects look extremely awesome. So we are gonna import our footage by going file, import, file. And then we're gonna find our footage. So for me, this is the first part saber. Then you have to make sure that you drag your composition by clicking and holding and dragging it to the new composition icon. So let's make sure that we have our footage properly corrected, apply auto color, auto contrast, auto levels, I don't have to do that, not everything has to be auto, or black and white, or whatever you like, we're not going to do black and white, that's just not intended. So for my footage, I'm going to find a point where I release my saber. Now the saber prop I'm using is a golf club handle. This is a putter. Basically there's a long black line. Yes, that is going to be our test footage. Now this is not a good prop to use in my opinion, but there was nothing else that I could grab onto that resembled a sword. So this was the closest thing that I could grab. But you have to make sure that your prop is a authentic lightsaber or something that's thin enough to be a part of a lightsaber. So what you're going to do is you're going to go and drag your timeline point to a certain time when it starts to come up, like this. Actually, right here. So then you're going to right click on your timeline and click new, solid, and type in saber blade. And then to make sure that the composition matches, and you have to make sure that the composition matches. So make sure that the whole area is scaled properly, then you click OK. And then what you do is you find, let's expand it a bit, we're going to find the saber effect. So saber, lightsaber version 2. We're going to drag it to the white area, and then there's our saber. Now, it's not complete yet. So what you need to do is we're going to set we're going to set our preferences to the left. So, the first preferences you have to set are the start and end position. So click the stopwatches here to set the start and end positions because this is what you'll need to edit with. So then, after you do that, you can also set a preference on the thickness and extent which is the extend effect of the saber. So what we're going to do is we are going to line up our points by going down here all the way down so that it looks like that the saber is subtracting. So we're going to thicken it and drag it down like this. And then we animate it by advancing the frame. So next frame over and then we find our, we find our point where the saber shows up. Then you use the scroll wheel to scroll up, and then there you see the saber line. So let's say you go back, it's down, and then it's up. And then when you reach a certain point where you can start rotoscoping, you turn off show glow, and you can change the color to any color you want. So let's just say I'm going to set it to red, it's become a Sith for once. So we're going to drag it. And then once you see a frame, you click this point here to drag it up like this. Then you click this point here 
and you drag it up like this. And then you repeat the process as you advance the frames. So this is how you normally do it. You advance each point in the frame to match your prop. So this is tedious work and a painstakingly long process if you don't have simple footage. If you have footage that's simple like this, no problem. But if you have advanced footage where there's actual fight scenes, that's where the real work lies. So this basically is an easy clip to use to record our footage. So we're just going to keep going here as we line up the points with our prop. Now I'm talking slow because I want to make sure that everybody understands it because most of you don't have After Effects. Most of you are using a program that's a standalone from all of this. So if you don't have After Effects, you can find a way to get it on YouTube. So you can just Google how to get After Effects and then that'll solve your problems. So anyways, once you have finished lining up your footage, let's just advance a few frames and drag like that. Okay. Advance a few frames, drag it. Advance a few frames, drag it. Let's see how that looks so far. And then you can recheck your work by going and advancing frames one by one. Like I said, it's a very long process, but a very, a very easy one. So that you have to make sure that everything lines up. And also, a high performance computer will make this a whole lot easier. So make sure that you have the latest graphics card technology when you're recording your footage. So once everything lines up, everything looks good, you can make corrections as you go along, like relining your points. Like if there's something that goes out of place, like what just happened there, you can re you can touch up everything. So if there's a frame out of line, you can adjust the point accordingly. Like boom, right there. That doesn't look good. You set the thickness to whatever you want. There we go. So that looks good. So once we're done that, we are going to show glow again. Now that looks awesome. But it's not awesome enough. To make it look really good, you have to go to where it says Mode, and then click the down arrow, and click Screen. Now, doesn't that look much better? Because it's actual screening of the effect, so that it doesn't look so cartoony or so generic. And then you can also add Motion Blur to it, so you can click Motion Blur for both. But this still doesn't look good enough. Why? Because there's no glow emanating from me. The saber's glowing, but I'm not glowing. How do we do that? We're going to click on our film layer and we're going to press Ctrl D to duplicate the layer if you have a Windows computer. So, for this layer that we duplicated, we're going to select Add. Whoa, I'm bright. So, what we're going to do is we are going to use our trusty pen tool, click the pen tool icon, and then you're going to mask yourself around there. So, once you've masked yourself properly, this is what it should look like. Everything else is dark, but you're glowing. Interesting, isn't it? And this is what it'll look like unedited, but this doesn't look good. There's still a few touch-ups we need to do, so we're going to go to where it says masks, and then drop down the masks, and then we're going to go to feather, so that we can expand the feathering of the mask. Feathering is a term to soften, just to make things look softer. So, once we do that, we have to line up our mask preferences properly, and then adjust the glow setting. So, basically my face and everything else is glowing here, and that looks really cool, but still not perfect. So, what we're going to do is we are going to blah 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 set the glow back because it shouldn't happen 
all the time. Like, I shouldn't be glowing all the time when the saber's not even out yet. So you have to left click and hold onto your frame setting. So when you start here, you see these two arrows, you click and hold and drag it to a certain point. So let's say up to here. You drag it up to a certain point here. So then up to here, when the saber gets closer, you can also set what's called mask opacity. So then you can set it to dark like this. So it's not quite there yet, but if you reach a certain point like this, you set the mask opacity up to here. It's not quite ready, so you can click and hold the keyframe point and drag it even further to delay the glow. So, it stretches the time it takes to glow. There! You see? Look at that. It stretched it, it, stretched it out to a certain point. There we go. But, still not perfect because it's not glowing red. So, what we're going to do is we are going to click the X here, then we're going to type in color. So we have to make sure that we pick the right color preference. So what we're going to do next, we're going to go to color balance or whatever works for you. So we're going to go shadow red balance over here. Doesn't look good. Wait, I think we applied it to the saber blade. Make sure that you apply it to the right setting and you can just play around with these settings however you like. So there you go. You can use color balance and adjust the shadow balance, shadow red balance, mostly the balances of your colored saber. So in this case, I adjusted it so that it would be a red glow. And this is how it looks. Saber down, but then when it gets closer, a glow. Isn't that beautiful? Now what I'll do is I'm also going to annotate the ways that you do this as well. So if you missed a point, the annotations in the description will have a time code and you can click on that time code to go back to the effect that I did. So that is it. What I showed you was how to import footage, how to rotoscope footage, and how to add glow to it. So basically once you're done, you go and combine all your layers. You go layer, pre-compose, final, and then that's how it looks. Looks really good. Now this is just basic footage that I use, so this is relatively easy. So most of the time you'll have advanced footage where somebody has a broomstick handle, where they're doing double bladed lightsaber attacks, or dual sabers where a person has two sabers. There will be more advanced techniques later on. This is just a general fundamental video on how to start making your own lightsaber effects realistic and clean. So this takes lots of practice and you have to make sure that everything looks good. So that's how you do it. So with that being said, leave your comments below if you want to see more tutorials because I would love to give more help and advice to any aspiring editors out there. Now I have been editing for years. I'm not a pro. I'm not some sort of guru. I'm just a guy that loves to edit and have fun with it. So that's what I did. I just used what I know and made a video for you. I hope this helps and if it doesn't help please leave me a comment. I'll make sure to answer back as soon as possible and correct things if they don't seem right. So thanks very much for watching everybody. Get Field for Life and keep on editing.